The following segment is sponsored by Inovia Vein Specialty Centers. Welcome back to AM Northwest. They specialize in the evaluation and treatment of vein issues. And now the COVID crisis has added some new problems like COVID toes. Here to tell us more, we welcome from Inovia Vein Specialty Centers, Dr. Edward Boyle. Good morning, doctor. Let, let's Good first, morning. let's talk about uh, first though, uh, blood clotting and related to COVID and then how it affects COVID toes. Yeah, that's it's something that's uh, of growing interest to, to all of us because we're hearing uh, you know, initially about how COVID would impact people's ability to breathe. But as there's been more people infected around the world, there's more and more reports coming out to help us better understand that there's a significant impact of blood clotting inside the body that's contributing not only to problems in the lungs, but also in the legs. And now we're starting to see that, that it can impact not only the big veins, but also like the big veins in the legs, um, but also some of the smaller veins, like at the tips of the toes and such. And it's just something that there's a lot more understanding of this coming out. Um, so when blood uh, is in our system, it's not supposed to be clotting. It's only supposed to clot once there's like a cut, for example. Right. But if clot starts to happen inside the body abnormally, it can form a blood clot in the back of the leg. It can form a, a blood clot that sometimes can break off and go to the lung. Uh, when, it, when it happens in the leg, that's called a deep vein thrombosis because it happens in the vein. And then when it happens in the lung, that's called a pulmonary embolism. And they're related because the blood can break off and go from the vein in the lung right up through the heart. I'm sorry, the vein in the, in the calf right up through the heart into the lung. So early on, um, investigators and, and folks working on the front line started seeing that uh, when they did tests, they found that some of these patients in the big centers in Asia, and Europe and now uh, here in the United States had blood clots in their lungs. Wow. And the question was, did that just happen in the lung itself as a reaction to the, the virus or did it break off and come from the legs? And what we're seeing now is a lot more research suggesting maybe a little bit of both. There's still more to understand, but about one out of three patients hospitalized for uh, COVID have blood clots in their legs. Wow. Um, so that's that's a, a significant concern that there's a lot of investigation going around, not only how to diagnose that, but treat it. You also treat, you treat varicose veins, which are unsightly for a lot of people that bothers them, and then it's painful. So tell me about what you do for them, what you're able to do for them. Well, we have a specialized vein clinic with uh, three offices in Portland and one in Bend. Um, and we see folks for all kinds of vein issues, not just like blood clots like I was talking about, but also when they have leg pain. And a lot of times that leg pain is from varicose veins. So they can have swelling, they can have ache or heaviness because there's blood pooling in the leg. Sometimes that vein um, pooling uh, stretches out the skin and it causes an irritation of the skin. And that irritation skin can be itchy. And sometimes that, that skin breaks down and we call it a venous stasis ulcer. So a large part of our practice is dealing with people that have either skin breakdown and ulcers or just really red itchy skin or brown skin by the ankle, um, people with swollen legs. Um, and, the, and the nice thing is we can, we can evaluate and treat it all in the office. Uh, and so it's a, it's a much easier thing to get taken care of now than it was years ago. Is there a lot of downtime? You know, in the old days, we did this in the operating room. All of my partners were all surgeons, and uh, we were trained to do this with a patient in the operating room with big incisions and stitches and keeping the patient in the hospital. Nowadays, it's done in the office. It takes about 20 minutes. The patient walks in, gets it done, walks it out. Wow. There's no, there's no incisions, no stitches. It's all done using ultrasound and little tiny catheters and a local anesthetic. So it's really been one of those success stories, I think in medicine, where we went for something that was kind of invasive and, and painful to something minimally invasive that with, with very little downtime. And it's covered by insurance, isn't it? For some patients, you know, insurance will cover um, uh, vein problems when they cause symptoms like ache, pain, heaviness, tiredness, swelling, the wounds and ulcers, those are considered medical problems. There are some people that come to us and they just have veins that they don't like the way that it looks and they um, want to get it treated, but they don't have those symptoms. In that case, it's not generally covered by insurance, but then they can 
pay for that uh, um, from a cosmetic perspective. Yeah. But a majority of our practice are folks that come in with uh, um, other symptoms. Right. Dr. Boyle, thank you so much. We want to tell folks if you'd like to find out more, contact Inovia Vein Specialty Centers, four locations, Northwest Portland, Tiger, and Happy Valley, and Bend. The number will be on the screen. Also, we'll put it on our website at katu.com. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be right back with more in Northwest. Don't go away.